Now, Nick DeFree seems to be in a bit of trouble. Now, I know we all thought the silly season was over and done with, but maybe we were all wrong. Maybe Nick DeFree isn't as safe in that AlvaTauri seat as we thought he'd be. After he made his debut in Monza, he looked like the most desirable driver for every single F1 team, and eventually he obviously went to AlvaTauri. But that could change after some reports from a Dutch newspaper came out today. So ahead of his first full season in Formula 1, Nick DeFries has seemed to have made a decision in his younger youthful years, which has seemed to have backfired massively and everything could go wrong now, even his Formula 1 career. But here's what's happening. So we all know that Formula 1 is bloody expensive. Not everyone who wants to be a Formula 1 driver can be it because of the insane amount of costs there are to get to Formula 1. It works out at a few million to just climb the ladders of Formula 4, Formula 3 and Formula 2. So some people do need to take loans. And like any sane person, Nick De Vries decided to do that to fund his career. And this has sort of backfired on him. You see, the ex-Mercedes reserve driver and Formula E champion borrowed money from a real estate mogul, I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, Jürgen Schlotzendrost. Sorry, I got that completely wrong. Jürgen Schothrost, that's what I'm gonna say. And basically, he took some money to fund his career. It was apparently a quarter of a million euros via the short, I'm just gonna call him Mr. S, via Mr. S's uh, investment company towards the Freed to help him get to F1. Okay, so here's what I understand from uh, Mr. S's agreement with Nick DeFries. Apparently, once Nick DeFries got to F1, he would take 50% of all his earnings. Jeez, that's a lot of money. So Nick DeFries is throwing away half of his money to a guy who I guess kind of helped fund his junior career. But here's where the problem lies. You see, the devil is always in the details in this sort of thing. And in this contract, it would be if Nick DeFries got to Formula 1 before 2022, or in the year of 2022. And Nick DeFries is saying that he did get to Formula 1 in 2022. Because as we all know, Alex Albon got very ill with appendicitis in Monza. Therefore, Williams needed a replacement. And of course, they called up the Mercedes reserve driver, Nick DeFries, to fill in for Alex Albon. And of course, Nick DeFries did very, very well. And that performance of P9 in Monza attracted the likes of Helmut Marko, who yes, maybe isn't the most likable guy in the world, but he's very successful at scouting talent. And somehow managed to get DeFries to sign for Red Bull and AlphaTauri for the following season. Now, Nick DeFries and his team are saying that because he first raced in Formula 1 in 2022, made his Formula 1 debut, that he got to Formula Formula 1 in 2022 and that he will not be paying any of the money because from what I understand the contract said he would not have to give half of his earnings if he got to Formula 1 before 2022. He would only have to pay back the 250k that he borrowed while in actual fact he actually made an offer to the guy out of generosity. He said, you know what, I've already paid 190,000 euros to you. Here's what I'll do. I'll do that and another 250k. And then it's sorted. But Mr. S rejected this and is now suing Nick de Vries. Now the big question is, is Nick DeFries going to be able to stay in that AlphaTauri seat if he gets sued like this? Well if I was a betting man, I'd say yeah, he'll be absolutely fine with the seat. The only problem is, we haven't had an F1 driver sued like this in a long time, especially one that's this high profile. I just saw every single news outlet ever has been reporting on this. I think the most he'll get is to pay back the money. I imagine he has some pretty good lawyers to help him. But what do you think about this? Do you think Nick DeFries will keep his seat? Let me know in the comments below.